Hello everybody, welcome back to Read and Reread. I am Angelia and today I'm doing a little extra video because I have a book haul I want to share. And I want to save Tuesday for a tag video because as always I have an accumulation of undone tags. So I'm just going to do a special weekend edition to share a book haul. And I haven't done a book haul in a couple of months and things have accumulated. So it is time to report on the too many books that I have brought into my library in the past couple of months. And if you are observing Father's Day today, happy Father's Day. And if you're not, I hope that you are having a nice Sunday. So the very beginning of this haul is going to be a lightning round of books that you've already seen that are new to my library, but I've already either read them or featured them in another video. But I kind of have this thing where I like to let every new book have its moment in the haul video. Because I only do a haul video every couple of months, and so they have to have their little moment in the sun. So this is this is a speed round that I'm not going to go deeply into describing these books, but just kind of just kind of pay tribute to their to the to these newcomers to my library. So first of all, we have The Stranding by Kate Sawyer. A British author. It's a dystopian novel and it was a gift from Marsha Johansson and I am really excited to read this book because you know I love a good dystopian story and this is definitely in my July TBR. The next one is Long Island by Colm Toybean and I loved this book. I recently reviewed it. I ran out and bought this as soon as it came out. I didn't pre-order it because I could tell from the release date it was uh, the week of, I think it was the week of Emma's graduation. So I knew we would be out of town and I didn't want it to sit on my porch. So I went out and bought it and read it right away, which I don't usually do. I usually get all excited, run out and buy things, and then they wait and wait and wait. But I had to read this one because it, I was afraid of spoilerage. It was coming up in so many places. Loved it. And let's keep going. Then we have the three books that Emma got me. Uh, that I did the unbagging video for, the Mother's Day present, and those are Real Americans by Rachel Kong, which wins the award for heaviest and also fanciest looking new book. We have Clear by Karis Davies, which is, uh, I think it's Scottish, I think. And then we have Stephen King, You Like It Darker, Horror Short Stories. Also, I did pick up my own copy of Poetry Unbound by Padraig Otuma. He's the editor or the collector of these poems. You, If you've been around for a little while, you know I spent about a month and a half reading this book as a library book, and it, it's an anthology of poetry, mostly contemporary, along with his essays and insights into the meaning of each poem, why he selected it, and kind of inviting the reader to make their own connections and reflections. And so I really wanted to have my own copy and I've already, I just keep it sitting out and I've been opening it up and dipping into poems that I want to read again and rereading some of the essays. Now I'm going to slow down the pace a little bit to introduce all of the books you haven't seen yet before. And these are new books I have purchased over the past couple months. I think April was when I last did the haul video and kind of why, where I got or why, why I want to read these books. And so buckle in. And so let me know if you have read any of these or they sound interesting to you or whatever it is you want to say down in the comments. So here we go. The first one I actually won. I did not have to buy this book and I entered a drawing in a Facebook reading group and I won a copy of Table for Two by A. Martels. Now I have all of his other books and the other three are novels and this one is a novella and some short stories. And I haven't heard too many people talking about this. I wasn't, I'm not a real completist. I, there's very few authors that I automatically buy everything they put out. There's just a few. And even though I have really enjoyed and own all three of Tal's novels, um, when this came out, I don't know, I just was sort of like, oh, I think I'm going to wait and hear a little bit more about it. But I am very interested in it, and I do like short stories, but the whole short stories and the novella thing, um, I, I automatically I'm thinking, well, did he, 
is this what he planned or did they pressure him to put something out because it, it came out suspiciously in in tangent with the gentleman in moscow coming out on tv so i was like mm but so i'm hoping that they're really good but so but i am not 100 percent sold <laughs> i can't can you tell so i'm interested lincoln highway is my favorite book by this author this one had the novella kind of goes back to rules of civility which i don't remember really well so i'm cautiously optimistic i'm glad to have won it i didn't want to purchase it until i heard more about it and I was thinking about borrowing it from the library, but now I have it, so I'm glad. So last week, when we were in Denton to visit family and help with my mother-in-law's move to the memory care, uh, we did take a little break and we went to a wonderful used bookstore that is in Denton, Texas called Recycled Books and Records. And I am wearing a t-shirt from that store right now. Let me... I shall model my t-shirt. The back is the best part, so let me spin around. I don't know if you can see all this. If not, I'll insert a photo later. But Emma and I each bought this t-shirt in different colors. And I also did pick up a couple of books. And I was thinking of Priscilla from Evening Reader the whole time because I think this is her favorite bookstore. But I haven't been to this store in a long time, and it's really fantastic. It has all these floors and kind of nooks and crannies and little ramps and side trails and the organization. It's really great, I guess because it's in a big university town. It has really solid collections in uh, art history, cultural history, music. I mainly focused in uh, a few of the fiction areas because there was limited time and some family members have limited bookstore stamina. And so I kind of, you know, I didn't get to explore everything I wanted to look at, but it was really fun. And I did get two books. So the first one is kind of a holy grail I've been looking for for a while, and that is Devil in a Blue Dress by Walter Mosley. This is the first Easy Rollins novel, and it has been recommended to me a couple of times. I wrote it down about a year ago. I was talking about some other mystery book, and somebody said, oh, I think you'd really like this. And I realized that my library did not have it, and so I have been kind of low-key searching for it secondhand ever since. And I found this copy. It's a, it looks brand new. It's in excellent condition. And it is, here's, here's a little bit about what it's about. Can you just hear that? I know I talk about this every time, but it is so, it's so loud. I burned up a bunch of um, peppers that I was roasting in the oven the other day because I can't remember things like laundry and stuff in the oven to save my life without timers and this is so loud it obliterated the timer and I incinerated the peppers. <sighs> okay back to the book. The year is 1948. The town is Los Angeles. Okay I love a Los Angeles story. Easy Rollins, a black World War II veteran, has just been fired from his job at a defense factory. Drinking in his friend's bar, he's wondering how he'll manage to make ends meet. Then a white man in an off-white linen suit approaches him and offers him good money if Easy will simply locate Miss Daphne Monet, a missing blonde beauty known to frequent black jazz clubs. Easy doesn't know it yet, but by taking his job, his life is about to change forever. And I'm kind of loving this detail about the off-white linen suit. Like, is that important or they just put that in to spice up the the description so i am this is going to be great the next time i'm in my mystery mood i'm going to pick this up and i i've just been waiting to try this out for the longest time the other book that i got at recycled books i don't know anything about but it just caught my eye and i was really interested and that is an anthology called future tense fiction stories of tomorrow and i think this was published by the yeah by the editors of slate's future tense and i was i don't know how much you can see but there's author names all around here and a couple of them i zeroed in i saw emily st john mandel i saw carmen maria machado 
and then a bunch of people that I may have heard their name but I've never read anything by them or I just don't even know who they are and so I picked it up and started looking at it and on the back we have a Kirkus star and you know how that sways me and here's what Kirkus said because of the diversity of its authorship, this anthology does more than imagine what the world might be like if all of our perspectives were included. Instead, it moves past the picture of represent representation to a clear, uncompromising, imaginative look at just what it is that we are all included in. And the other review says, it's a dynamic, dud-free anthology of 14 short stories, da 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 Essential reading for anyone intrigued by what might come next for humankind. Okay, dud free. That's what I'm looking for because you don't always get that in a short story collection. And so this just really, really jumped out at me. And what's not to like? I like short fiction. I like science fiction. I like finding new authors. Uh, I like diversity in fiction. So. All of it seems like a recipe for success. If anyone has read this book or knows anything about it, let me know in the comments because I never even heard out of it. I think it came out in 2019. And yeah, it just, I this is the first time I ever heard of it. So I was excited to pick this up. All right, the rest of these books, I think I ordered from different venues at different times. And let me show you what all I have. I got the next book in the Tales of the City series that I am gradually reading. This is Baby Cakes. This is the fourth book in the series, which is about a group of friends that live in San Francisco, another one of my favorite cities. And the books began uh, being published and being set in the late 70s, and now it's up to into the 80s in this most, well, it's not the most recent installment. It's my most recent installment. And it says on the back, when an ordinary house husband and his ambitious wife decide to start a family, they discover there's more to making a baby than meets the eye. Help arrives in the form of a grieving gay neighbor. Okay, so I'm thinking that's Mouse, and now I'm sad already because I want to know who he's grieving. A visiting monarch and the dashing young lieutenant who defects from her yacht. Crazy plot coming in. Bittersweet and profoundly affecting, Baby Cakes was the first piece of fiction to acknowledge the arrival of AIDS. So I'm getting a very bittersweet vibe from that description, which happens a lot in this series. There's some, some sections that are so funny, and then there's some plots that are so absurd, and then there's this really strong emotional core among the recurring characters and their friendships and their, their yearnings, and so... I keep, every time I finish one, I think, okay, I need a little break from this. That, that was, the plot was just absolutely bonkers, even though I love the people. And then after a few weeks pass, I'm, I think, but, but then what happened? How are they? I got to check in on them. So Baby Cakes is the next one. Originally, this was in my Pride TBR plan, but I didn't get it in time. And I'm, I'm my dance card is pretty full. So I'm just going to read this soon. I don't know exactly when, but I'm looking forward to it. All right. You know, why do I keep saying that? Like, obviously, if I bought a book, I am looking forward to it and I'm excited. Otherwise, I mean, you're not going to go, well, I went ahead and bought this, but I can tell it's going to be a dud. I mean, nobody does that. So I don't know. All right. The next one, I got another book by Percival Everett. You know, I have a deep and abiding unquenchable love for Percival Everett that just started, I guess the year before last, was when I started reading his books when Trees was on the booker list. And I I just, I'm on a tear. And I recently read James, which was, well, you know, I keep mentioning it, but it's definitely one of my books of the year. This is one of his earlier books that I haven't read. And this is a wonderful copy, another one that looks completely unused. And in fact, it is a reprint. It's from Grey Wolf Press, but it is a newer printing because James and the Trees are mentioned on the back cover. So I guess they had been re-releasing his earlier books. This originally came out in 2009. And 
the back cover, I heard, I read somewhere, I don't know if it was somebody's comment or where I heard it, but somebody said they thought this was the funniest one. And he does, I mean, not all of his books are funny and some of them are a blend. Look at this picture. Here's the author picture. I have one of his books where the author picture is an empty park bench. This one is his back with a big crow on his shoulder. Everett's hilarious new novel follows not Sidney Poitier's tumultuous life as a wealthy orphan maturing under the watch of Ted Turner. Not Sidney gets arrested for driving while black and sleuths a murder case in Smut Eye, Alabama, all while navigating the recurrent communication problem. What's your name? A kid would ask. Not Sidney, I would say. Okay, then what is it? So his name is not Sidney Poitier. So there's there's that <laughs> right from the start, which kind of reminds me of Dr. No and the whole, all that business with the, the guy who specializes in the study of nothing. But anyway, when I'm ready for that Everett kind of flair and that sort of humor, I have not Sidney Poitier. I am not Sidney Poitier on deck. Not long ago, I read my first book by Miriam Taves and it was All My Puny Sorrows. Loved it so much and I got some wonderful suggestions from viewers and commenters about what else I should read by this author and I've written all of them down and so I'm on this on this book watch for good copies coming up of these other books. So the first one came along and I was able to get this really, really nice copy of Women Talking. It's absolutely, it's another wonderful hardcover edition. And oh, look at this, I love that. I know it was a movie that I have not seen. So maybe after I read it, I will watch the movie. I know that it's about um, a Mennonite community and something terrible has happened to the women and the one man is recording their secret conversation because they cannot write. That's that's what I know about it. And I know a little bit about what what the terrible thing is, but it's not in the blurb and I'm not going to say it because it might be a spoiler that I just heard from reading movie reviews. Um, so it just says, in, it's a quiet June morning in 2009. August Epp sits alone in the hayloft of a barn, anxiously bit, bent over his notebook. He writes quickly, aware that his solitude will soon be broken. Eight women, ordinary grandmothers, mothers, and teenagers. Yet to August, each one extraordinary will climb the ladder into the loft and the day's true task will begin. This task will be both simple and subversive. August, like the women, is a traditional Mennonite and he has been asked to record a secret conversation. So they're going to uh, share their stories and then they have 48 hours to make a life-altering choice on behalf of all the women and children in the colony. And I don't know, this is a Canadian author. I don't know where this exactly takes place, this story. I heard something about, I don't know what I heard. I don't know if this story takes place in Canada. Why did I hear something about South America? Maybe this is based on something that actually happened in South America. I'm going to find out when I read it. I don't know why South America is coming into my mind. Um, I don't know. So anyway, uh, I've heard that this is absolutely fantastic, um, super tense. As soon as soon as I finished reading All My Puny Sorrows, I knew that I had to pursue more books by this author. So here it is in this just beautiful copy. The next book is a memoir that just won a National Book Award, and it is Liliana's Invincible Summer by Christina Rivera Garza. And this one is a case of a friend made me do it because Michael's been talking about this book. Um, Michael Clark, AKA uh, Book of Dust in the comments, has been extolling the wonders of this book for a few months, and then it won the National Book Award. That just heightened my interest even more, and so I have bought a copy, and again, it's also the library's fault because they didn't have it and I really want to read it and I'd like to read it rather soon. Christina Rivera Garza 
is the director of the PhD program in creative writing in Spanish at the University of Houston. And uh, fun fact, I too once taught at the University of Houston. I was an adjunct there about 9,000 years ago in the 90s. And I, I adjuncted in the English department. Uh, actually at the main campus at U of H, I worked, I was, uh, I was a tutor in the, like the writing lab where people come for help with their papers, either technical help, uh, formatting and bibliographies or help with the actual composition or revision of papers. And then I also taught classes, English classes at U of H downtown and Houston Community College as well. Anyway, we're digressing. And I'm gonna read that this this summer because in my summer reading challenge, in my bookopoly, there is a, somewhere on here, there's one about a Texas author. So this is gonna be my Texas author. This is a memoir that Rivera Garza wrote about her attempt to find out more about her sister who was murdered by an ex-boyfriend in 1990. And so that is the Liliana of the title. And she travels to Mexico to investigate what she can find out about that summer and what led up to the murder. The description is, Rivera Garza tells a singular yet universally resonant story, that of a spirited, wonder, wondrously hopeful young woman who tried to survive in a world of increasingly normalized gendered violence. R Rivera Garza traces the history of Liliana's life from her early romance with a handsome but possessive and short-tempered man to that exhilarating final summer of 1990 when Liliana loved, fought, and traveled more widely and freely than she ever had before. So I think it may be heavy, but it just sounds so good. And then the award just sort of sent it up into a more immediate realm for me. And now I'm, once again, I'm so delighted to have it and ready to read it. I had to go overseas to get these. I ordered a couple of books from Blackwell's and this one we can just blame on my impatience and uh, my affection for UK editions and covers. I got Ghost Mountain by Ronan Hessian. Earlier this year, I read Leonard and Hungry Paul. I had that book for months and I finally read it and I absolutely loved it. And I, I don't even understand what this book is about, but I just needed to have it. And this is his new book. And I know that he has one more book that I haven't read and I don't know much about. So if you've read, I think it's called Penenka. If you have read that, drop me a comment about what you thought about that book and whether or not I should pursue it. But Ghost Mountain is his new one. And I've heard a tiny bit of a Booker prediction buzz about this book. That, that would be wonderful if it did show up there. But okay, this is it. This is all, this is the shortest thing. Maybe, um, maybe Hungry Paul wrote this. Ghost Mountain is a mountain that appeared yesterday, changing the lives of the local people. The town drunk, a retired teacher and her dog, a young soul and his wife, an old soul. Oh, a young soul and his wife, an old soul. It is a story about all that is unmistakably present, yet never truly fathomable in our lives. So that's it. That's all you get. There's a mountain. It suddenly shows up and then it's going to affect the people in this town. I really like the way that Ronan Hessian, just in the one book I read and the description of this, he kind of defies simple categories and I'm really looking forward to seeing what what he does with this. Like what on that slim premise, how is this story being spun? I'm so tantalized. And then last but certainly not least, we have The Night Alphabet by Joelle Taylor. I don't think this has been published in the US yet but I heard a review of this, I heard it a couple of times from UK booktubers and I just, I, I just could not, I wasn't patient. I had to, I just really wanted it. It just sounded like something that was really up my alley and Stephen uh, picked this up. He looked at it when it came in and was interested as well and he started reading it. Let's see, he is on page 80. He told me he's liking it so far but he hasn't gotten far enough to really make much of a comment about it. But this is a story about a woman. Okay, so she's, it's 
I think it, it's speculative and I think it's kind of experimental. So the year is 2233. There's a woman named Jones and her body is covered in tattoos, but she wants to add a thin line that links all of it together. And apparently she she's had many lives and all the tattoos are part of a fabric of stories. She has lived in multiple time periods and in multiple forms. And then all that together, all of it is something together. So composed of interconnecting stories set across geographies and time spans, we visit the dystopian cities of the quiet men, the coal mines of 19th century Lancashire, join a gang of vigilante sex workers, enter the world of an incel murderer, haunt the old Maryville gay bar, and uncover plans to genetically modify female children. Each story brings us closer to Jones's truth and how her life is intri intricately interwoven with that of the women tattooing her body. That, that sounds so Angelia. I cannot wait. And I hope that I get a good report from Stephen's reading of the book as well because that just sounds really good. Okay, so that is it. Let me know what you think. Have you read any of these books? Do any of these books uh, sing out to you and now you want to read them also? Or what else did you get? What have you gotten recently that you are really psyched to read? Tell me all about it down in the comments. I hope you've been having a great weekend and I will be back on Tuesday. I'm going to look through my list of tags that I've been tagged in and select one for the occasion and that's where you'll see me next. Have a great day. Bye-bye.